sofa6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Hour And here we are on a Thursday night as ever was on Thursday the 24th of October in the year of 2013 the day after the 23rd of October and it's been a bit of a day to day um, Mark Shaw as you might recall was on VT Talk last night and, and he's guesting on the Hayes Hour tonight but not for the same sort of reason um, you'll find out why that is after the titles and we have to induce the titles introduce not induce them introduce them yes yes because my um it's yeah it's been a very busy day today keith i hadn't realized that you have no clue <laughs> oh, oh you must tell us all about it well i'm sure we will and we'll do that right after the titles because this is the, the here's hour, hour. And we are back in the room and I am going to delve straight into it. None of the usual banter and witty repartee and crap like that. Um, before we do go there though, I must say, we've got Mark Shaw with us, but uh, he, like a great many other people, Kat and myself included, is having problems with Skype. The latest version appears to light your camera for about 10 seconds and then it just goes, sodger, we're not having it. And so we've lost Mark's camera. It was perfect last night. It's been another update, I think, this morning. And it's all gone to hell in a handcart. So we've got Mark in audio only. Mark, hello. Hi, Dave. Hi, Keith. Hi. Hi, everybody. Right. Thank you. Hello and good evening and welcome. I'm not going to ask how you are because I know. Um, and I'd be, I think the easiest way to do it is to let you tell the story from, I don't know, what was it, half past six this morning? Yeah, basically. Well, yeah, around about 6.30 is when I leave to go to work. Uh, as people may know, I'm a vendor in a marketplace to sell electronic cigarettes. Uh, a small in, went to work as normal, gone to see the market inspectors where I handed my ticket to get the, and they allocate you your pitch. As I've done that, usual banter with the guy, and he says, you know, Mark, well, what is it you sell again? Because I have to write down a special number on your ticket which complies with what you sell. I say, oh, electronic cigarettes. And then one of the other market inspectors in the back pipes up, oh, you're not allowed to sell them in the market anymore. Like, not me personally, in general. That was what they said. Mm. I'm sorry, I, I can't sell electronic cigarettes in the market anymore. When did this come about? Uh, she mentioned that they had all received an email, and the guy I'm talking to, the inspector I'm talking to, he hadn't received the email. But... I've said, you know, for what, on what grounds? Like, on what grounds is this? This is the first thing I, I've I've heard about this. You know, I've had no notification or anything. They know that what I sell. Uh, and the the guy who I was speaking to, the inspector, he got onto the phone to one of his superiors, a guy called Paul. I still haven't got to speak to this Paul, but he sort of like was going through the motions and stuff like this and talking to him, and I could hear him saying, "Yes, yeah." When he put the phone down, he said the explanation was it was to do with the borough's smoke-free policy. This is what he said to me. What? Uh, exactly. That's exactly my reaction as well. I was like, what? Sorry. Oh, yes, uh, they don't think it's right because it encourages children to smoke and it encourages non-smokers to smoke. These were his words, not mine or anything like I was straight away, I, I didn't get angry or anything like that because... I just stood there and kind of laughed and was like, you do know what you're saying is ridiculous because e-cigarettes don't fall under 
smoke-free policy, obviously, you know, it's, it's got nothing to do with it. And I said, you know, this doesn't actually sound right. I need uh, someone I can contact. Like these guys, that, that, let me get this straight, the market inspectors, just they're doing their job. They're really nice people. They wasn't being part of my language, RC about it or anything like that. And they were kind of on my side saying, yeah, this doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right at all. It, it's silly because obviously we know that you don't sell to children. Like, like, I, I get on with the guys. Mm. But anyway, so cut a long story short, I've ended up coming home, couldn't trade for the day. Uh, I was given the market manager's number to phone, a woman named Debbie uh, Carpenter. So I, I phoned her, uh, spoke to her, and you've had a bit of an insight into this, Dave. And what she told me was really kind of vague, but she kind of contradicted what I'd been told by the market inspector. She said that they had received an email from Trading Standards and not again. Did not imply anything that this was a letter from Trading Stand, an email from anything directly to do with me. It sounded like generally, generally, generally that uh, the Trading Standards have been around and visited a few shops and vendors. This is what she said, and they had found some products that wasn't in compliance. Uh, and from the gist of that, and you know, she rambled on about Ishisha and stuff like this, and again mentioned miners. And again, I'm pointed out to I've never sold these shisha. I never will sell these shisha. I actually agree, kind of thing, that there are some issues with these shisha and stuff like that. And that, uh, that she basically was saying that gen in general, they've stopped people selling e cigarettes in Tower Hamlets. This is the kind of gist I got from it, anyway. As I said, it was very, very vague. I've asked, she said that she was going to get back in touch with me with a little bit more information. Has she? Uh, no, she didn't. I actually chased her up again at two o'clock today, phoned her. She said to me, sorry, I've been very busy in and out of meetings all day, and that she would phone me back at the end of the day. Uh, she hasn't got back to me at all, which I'm kind of in the thing that no news is good news in a sense, because the gist I get from this is someone sent an email somewhere and someone's really got the wrong end of the stick of it all. And if there's something, you know, she mentioned that people have been sent letters regarding trading standards and their compliance. And I said, I didn't receive a letter. I, 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 elaborating on for this, I actually received a visit from trading standards in the market three weeks ago. Yeah. And it, it was two or three weeks ago. And it wasn't, again, it wasn't that they'd been called out. They was just doing, it was when a few vendors throughout the country had suddenly received these visits from trading standards. They'd been briefed about electronic cigarettes. We had a great chat. They looked through everything on my stall, and they was actually, they actually complimented me. They said, it's nice to see someone know so much about the stuff they're selling. They didn't tell me to remove anything from the stall. They didn't even want to take my name and address. They didn't even ask me my name. They showed me their ID. Again, as I said, went through all the stuff. As they was going off, one of them mentioned that compliance changes all the time. So me being me said, well, could you take my email address and my details, and if there's any changes, could you forward them to me and forward me to full compliance so I know that I am 100% compliant? That was how bothered they was. They wasn't even going to take my details. They left. I gave them my details. They left. So I can't see this being any complaints or anything to do directly with me. This is the thing I need to try and emphasize because... It just seems a general ban in Tower Hamlets if this is the case. And if this is the case, then it's ridiculous. It's, it's why I haven't, like, you, I, I, you said about how I'm feeling today. I haven't even felt angry. It's really strange. I, I feel just kind of amused by it all because it's either a massive cock up on their part or they've just totally acted outside of their remit. Well, no, and, and invented laws, basically. Well, it sounds like it because I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure there's no bylaw uh, has been enacted in Tower Hamlets to deal with e-cigarettes. Are you aware of anything? Not at all. No, nothing whatsoever. There hasn't. You know, I get we get the local propaganda mag that's uh, printed by the mayor of Tower Hamlets every week. Uh, I read that all the time. There's been absolutely nothing about e-cig vendors in there, and they said about people selling e-cigs in Tower Hamlets. As far as I'm aware, there's only one other market trader in Tower Amnitz who sells electronic cigarettes. Uh, everybody tells me that he has a store in Bethnal Green. Every time I've been there, he's never been there. And there's a few shops that sell a few cigar likes and egos and a couple of juices and stuff like that. 
but you'd be hard pushed to actually find them. You know, it's it's probably 0.1% of their entire business. But the thing is, if trading standards have got on their backs, even if they were compliant, they probably wouldn't even know, Dave, to be fair, because they don't even know what they're selling. Well, you know I mean? and it, it just it just seems a bit strange. It just seems all a bit weird. So I, I need to know the full details of what's going on. I can see things going on in chat about if I contact the seeker. I'll tell you this now, the vaping community, Dave Dawn at the top of the list here, the vaping community, CETA, ECA, they have absolutely been outstanding for me today. They, I think this is why I've remained so calm because the, the, the support I've got is second to none. This is one hell of a community. When you guys fall on trouble, I tell you, there's no better people to back your corner. And I'm so, so confident that I've done nothing wrong that, and that they're acting outside their jurisdiction, that this can only end up positively for me. And if it does happen to be a ban for vapors, this could turn out very nicely for the vaping community, but I won't go too much into that. Right. Hmm. Could, I, could I just ask, Mark, how long you've had the, the stall at the market? I've been trading in the Tower Amnitz markets now for just under three months, Keith, fully trading, right. fully compliant with my full license and all of my, my uh, you know, I've got all the liability insurance, I've got everything. You can't get the license without jumping through all the hoops beforehand. And presumably when you got the license, the council were well aware of what you were selling. That would be uh, yeah. covered on the license. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yeah, you have to state you can't you can't be vague when applying for the license. You have to be completely, you know, upfront and honest with what you're doing. Otherwise, they, and as I say, they've seen me out every time. I, I see every week it's got written on my ticket what I sell electronic cigarettes. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. It is absolutely it? ridiculous. I mean, he, here is a situation <coughs> there where I mean, I've. I've known of Mark and known Mark and spoken to Mark for quite a while. And I'm going to say it, and I'll say it in front of everybody, and I don't mind, he's a stand-up guy. I think he's one of the, the stars, if you like, in the firmament. He's a stand-up guy. He's passionate. He's an advocate. He knows his way around ACIGs. I cannot possibly see a situation where he would put a foot wrong. But here we have a situation where a local council, for reasons which we still really can't, find out what they're doing have decided arbitrarily to say you can't sell those on a market now there's one or two people in chat have already said it's their market they can make the rules up to suit themselves yes they possibly can but this hasn't been done in that kind of way has it i mean this has just been a guy turning up for a day's work to make a day's pay an honest day's living to be told sod off no notice no consultation, no nothing. He's basically being told, sod off, you can't work. And that, to me, seems completely out of order. No, I mean, they can't do what they like. They've given him permission X number of months ago yeah. to sell e-cigarettes at their market. Mm -hmm. And they haven't given any valid explanation as to why he can no longer do so. Has, has there been any hint at all, Mark, what what, uh, what they've got on it? Or is it just trading standards has said something? Well, as I said, the first guy said it was smoke-free policy. That was who this Paul, what this Paul seemed to think, who he was speaking to, the, the market inspector. And yet the market's manager, who runs the whole lot of markets, seems to think it's something to do with trading standards. Like I actually explained to her that I hadn't received one of these letters about non-compliance, and, and she actually said to me on the phone, oh, well, you should be okay then. It shouldn't affect you then. But obviously it has affected me, because at the very least I've lost a day's money already anyway. I've lost a day's work. You know, it, it, it just, as I said, I think, and as someone just said in chat as well, I really do think that they've received an email from saying about e-cigarettes, and someone's really got the wrong end of the stick and I really do hope that that is how it turns out and that I'm back out either this week or next week like one thing I will say is I trade in, where I trade on a Sunday in Brick Lane it doesn't actually come under my license it comes under Tower Amnitz but it's a private market on private land right. the 
Cold air will not s stop me setting up, and I plan to set up on Sunday. And I really do hope I get a visit from Trading Standards because if I've got no further along the line with a council by then, you know, because you know, I would like to think that the council haven't phoned me back today because they're all running around trying to find an excuse to stick. But the the truth of it probably is they're just being a council and just can't be bugged. Do you get what I mean? And they're just <laughs> just being a council and taking their time about stuff. Yes. I'm could go could I just ask, Mark, is it an indoor and outdoor market? It's, a, it's an outdoor market, Keith. It's quite a famous East London market called Roman Road where I trade during the week. It's it's a, it's a market I've grown up on. I used to work there as a kid pulling stalls in and things like that. It's, it's somewhere somewhere I know well. It, it's, it's a net, but there's so it, so if, it's a, if it's an outdoor market, how can it be a smoke-free market? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the whole, I mean, you know, if we're talking about smoke-free... <laughs> If we're talking about smoke free, as MG Jones has just said, does that mean that none of the stalls can sell lighters, lighter fluid, gas, papers, filters, uh, rolling machines, any of that kind of stuff? Of course it doesn't. It's bloody stupidity. And to make another point, even Jeremy Mean of the MHRA has gone on record publicly stating that e cigs do not come under smoke free legislation. They don't have a bloody leg to stand on. This is persecution, pure and simple. Go yeah, on, Mark. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. It, it does it. And if this is, if it has actually come about as being a full ban. But even on the other foot, the people I've been speaking today and the advice I've been getting, because, you know, something like this does make you question yourself. I, I've been sitting there thinking, well, three weeks ago, were they just playing Mr. Nice Guy and, and have I done something wrong? And, you know, you start to question your, what, you, what you're doing and stuff like, which isn't such a bad thing, but I can't come up with anything. I can't actually sit there and think because I thought if there was anything that serious that they saw, anything that serious that they thought they needed to shut me down, surely they'd have shut me down there and then. Surely they'd have at least took my name and my address. Well, I mean, tra tra trading standards being trading standards, if there is something amiss... <coughs> They don't mess about. If it's if it's a, a minor misdemeanor, they will send a letter saying you need to put this right or whatever. But if it's something that, that would warrant an immediate closure, such as this has occurred, then they just do it. Trading standards would do it on the spot. There would be no buy your leave, kiss me ass, I thank you. It would just happen straight off the bat. So it would have happened three weeks ago if it was trading standards. That's my opinion, and I, I would imagine that's everybody else's. Go so uh, so do, 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 do you trade in markets in other boroughs, Mark? Or, or just I, don't, I don't, Keith, but I am going to. We're actually... They're, they're there's, the, there's all these rules and regulations in London about holding separate traders' licenses in separate boroughs right. on days where the markets coincide. You can't do that. But I have someone who works with me. Uh, we're in the process of literally we should be knowing any day now if he's got his license. So although this could, you know, although this is an ideal, I, I will still be able to go out and trade because we will be trading in the other borough. But who's right. to say it doesn't happen there as well? But what I was going to say is, even if this is a trading standards issue, then even then they've gone way outside the law. Exactly. Because they haven't informed me. I've not been informed. It's just like, no, nope, you can't trade anymore. So, you know, no leave, no buy, no, no explanation on nothing. And it, it just, it just seems crazy. It seems absolutely crazy. And if it is a ban, as I say, this could turn out to be. You know, a positive in a way. It's a negative. It's going to be an headache and stuff like that, and there's going to be a long road ahead. But I'll fight this. I'm not going to sit there, sit back and just let it happen. And tomorrow, when I do speak to Debbie again, uh, I'm probably going to be a little bit sterner than I was today. I was a bit hyped up when I spoke to her today, for obvious reasons. Mm. But as I said, I'm quite calm about it because, as I said, I'm confident. To, that, that this can not only work out in my favour at the end of the day it can only because I've done nothing wrong I've done absolutely nothing wrong I've done everything I possibly can to stick with their compliance and to be to be above board the last thing I want to do is to give anyone any ammunition to throw at e-sig users to throw at us vapors that's the last thing on this planet I want to do indeed I mean it would seem reasonable to me and obviously you want to see if uh, you know, you get a positive answer, but then 
it would perhaps take you to the elected politicians of the council if you don't get anywhere. I mean, there'll yeah. be a, there'll be a committee which is responsible uh, for trading standards, for markets, and all the rest of it. That committee will have a chairman. You also, of course, have your your own local councillor who you could ask to investigate. But clearly, you'd want to go through the channels you're going through first. There's, but, uh, I mean, that would be the next stage. There's also it? there's also the point that uh, <coughs> one of Mark's MEPs is Marini Anakadakis, who is very very strongly <coughs> supportive of uh, e cigs. <coughs> Um, yeah. And not medicinal e cigs either. She's one of the Tory MEPs down there, and I'm absolutely <coughs> certain that uh, that she'll be in. Mark, one thing I'm going to tell you, Bonnie lad, you're not on your own in this. Uh, I know. I've seen that today, David. As I said, I, I, I've been overwhelmed by the response. Talk about have the A team on your side. <laughs> well, uh, seriously, I mean, whatever we can do to help, and I'm, I mean everybody in the community. Whatever we can do, we will do, because aside from anything else, it strikes me that this is the thin end of a really rather rough wedge, because if Tower Hamlets is allowed to go through with this, and we, I've, I'm going to stress, it's a Labour Council. Yeah. Um, if Tower Hamlets go through with this, Labour Councils all over the rest of the country will follow suit. We know they're already trying by what we were talking about last night, but this... I'm sorry. This is just, it's 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 a step too far, and uh, well, it's just I, bureaucracy gone mad. Isn't it, it is yeah. absolutely, but I'm I'm not I'm not prepared to allow Tower Hamlets to be successful in this. And whatever it is I need to do to help, I'm going to do it. That's my pledge. There it is. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. I really do. I mean, yeah. yeah. But one thing I was saying, people were saying, tweet this like mad. Get the press involved. If it comes to that, I will, but I need to know the full details mm -hmm. first. I've spoken, I've even taken legal advice today, and they all agree with me. I need to know exactly what is going on yeah. first, and preferably get that in writing, basically, yeah. because without knowing what's going on at the moment, as I say, this could all just be a, a mess up at their end, that, that someone's misread an email, and that, you know they've got the wrong end of the stick. And if that's the fact, I don't really want to go off upsetting whole council departments when the fact is I'm going to have to be working in that borough for the rest of my, for the rest of my days, if you get what I mean. Yes, absolutely. So I'd rather absolutely get my facts completely straight first. Well, um, I, th I, th I think you're really right there. I mean, I worked for a local council for many years. And you need to satisfy yourself that you can't get any further with the officers before you go to elected members of the council because that can sometimes have the opposite effect to what you want, if you follow my meaning. Yes. Yeah, I do, Keith. Yeah, no, and that is sound advice. It's exactly that. It's, you know, I'm, I'm on a, I need to be smart about this. Yeah. And, get, and you know, let, basically give them the rope and let them hang themselves, you know? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. If exactly. I, I've, I've just been reading chat as we've been talking about this, and I want to echo what's been said in there. Um, and what Mark is saying, we've got to take Mark's lead on this. I know Twitter is so tempting to go and just start bombarding no, emails, no. Uh, demonstrations, all of that kind of thing. It would be, it would be, it, it's so tempting to go off half cocked. But if this is a big misunderstanding, if somebody somewhere has got their wires crossed, if it is, I cock up. And please God, I hope it is. Me too. Then, if we, if if we as a community go all hell for leather gung-ho over the top and charge with bayonets fixed and, and, and magazines filled, this could rebound badly exactly. on that. Exactly. We've exactly. got to take his lead on it. Uh, I, I know what's going on, and, and trust me, there's, we've got a lot of brains involved with all of this already. Um, we need to take Mark's lead. As we get more information, uh, we will keep you updated. As, as Mark finds out more, he's got an, there's an open ticket onto the show for you, Mark, to keep people involved. <laughs> Thank you, Dave, and um, I'll, be, I'll be updating the community and, and yourselves. As soon as I know anything, I'll let you know exactly what is going on. Great. That's that's amazing to hear. That's brilliant to hear. Um, I'm, I'm, do you know what? I'm so sorry this has happened to you, Mark, but I'm going to say this. If it had to happen to anybody, 
there's nobody better for it to happen to. <laughs> I, did, I must admit, I did say <clears throat> to the market inspectors, not do you know who I am as such, but it was kind of along the lines of, I think you've really kind of picked on the wrong person here because I know this business inside out. I, I, I've been actively <laughs> campaigning and I know what you're telling me is completely wrong. Yes. You know? But as I said, it's not their fault. I couldn't take anything out on the on the market inspectors because they're just doing a job and they really are nice people. There's only one there who can be a bit funny, but she wasn't even there today. Uh, and the rest of them, they're good guys. They're guys like me and you are just doing a job you know they've yeah. been told to do something and they've got to do it so there's no point in me getting angry with them no no well, well i think you're uh, you're to be admired for dealing with it in such a calm way because if you'd gone into a you know like a bull in a china shop th that never works does it mark's got backbone and sense yes and if if we all take our lead from mark he's lead on this one he's right at the sharp end you don't get any closer to the cold face than this we take our lead from Mark. As Mark tells us he needs support, help, numbers, whatever, then I'm sure we'll all be there. Mark, thank you for joining us and uh, and letting us letting us know what's been going on. That's uh, as I say, it, it's it's horrible that it's happened, but I'm pleased that it's happened to you rather than somebody without your um, your ethics, your backbone, and your character. And and I'm not right. just blowing smoke up your ass here. I know you quite well, and I can't. If it's going to happen to anybody, I couldn't think of a better person for it to happen to. That simple. Um, for the time being, Mark Shaw, thank you for joining us. I'm sorry we okay. couldn't get the video in, everybody. It's Skype. Petition MS. Microsoft. No um, if you, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter as well, at Fezzer, at F3ZZER. So you can follow me there, everyone. F3ZZER for everybody. Follow Mark. He'll tell you what he needs and when he needs. And as I keep on saying, if you're not on Twitter... You should be. Mark, for the time being, thank you very much. As I say, open ticket. Anytime you want to come on to VT Talk or on to Here's How to Update Us, the door's open. Cheers, Dave. Cheers, Can I go and Mark. Enjoy the rest of the show now. Okie dokie, I'll let you hang up because I'll have to reach over Keith and if I do that, he'll be in my pockets and I've got stuff <laughs> in there. <laughs> right, Keith. Good night, Cheers. 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 Um, we'll take a quick <coughs> ad break and, uh, and when we come back, we're going to upset British American tobacco. It seems like the thing to do. Uh, don't go anywhere. We will be back in two minutes. Super6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Out. And we are, 
as I've just said to Keith, back in the room. While the adverts were on, we were talking over them, but you couldn't hear them. Uh, go on, say what you just said about it being ridiculous. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I, the, the man handled it in an admirable, admirable way. I you think. as well. You yes. haven't been talking to Sav, have you? <laughs> No, he, he, he did. I mean... Uh, I've, I've got to read something out for chat. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, just in... I mean, it, seriously, I'm no Sav. I'm no cat. I can't do this reading chat while I'm doing other things. I'm a bloke. I can't multitask. But I've got to read this out that Screwbag put into chat. And I have every faith that he means every word of it. He said, Mark, I'll donate the stock. Open a shop. That's from Screw from Screwbag. Screwbag, you can come yeah. out of the corner if you're there, and indeed get a packet of rich tea biscuits and a cup of coffee. You deserve them, mate. That is brilliant, and that is a massively, massively brilliant offer. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love this community, and I'm so privileged to be part of it and able to fill your lives for an hour twice a week. I th that's above and beyond, isn't it? It is. It is. Moonlit just thing. said, can't we spare the chocolate? Yeah, go on. Chocolate hobnobs. Have the chocolate hobnobs. It's just my own preference. I do like the rich tea. They're nice for dunking in coffee, don't you think? Oh, I like them with cheese on. Rich tea with cheese on? Yes. I bet you like Marmite yes. as well. Uh, mm, not particularly. Mom. Chris. Not particularly. <laughs> We'll have we'll have none of that, thank you very much. That in fact that sounded vaguely sexual. <laughs> what? <laughs> mm, my. It's like Nigella Lawson on Ah oh, now there's a Stop it. I know you were watching that till you came round. <sighs> what? That's what your left hand was doing in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Shall we upset BAT? <clears throat> yes. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah, upset okay. BAT. I'm gonna go. To close you up, you can. If I can remember which one it is, it's that one. And I'm going to go there. Look at that. Now then. Yeah. Yes. That looks like a nice pack, reg sig, right? This comes from uh, the East Asia crowd. Um, it says on the back, from Vape Lux. There you go. It's 2.4% nicotine. Um, tobacco free, tar free, order free. Up to 180 puffs each is what it says. Each. Again, why would it say each? <laughs> ah, but let me show you. Because for fifteen quid, fourteen ninety nine, you get five five disposable e cigs for fifteen quid, and you can actually take one with uh, the little rubber thing on. I haven't a pocket. You don't need a pocket. It's like is, is it is this going to be a sort of open thing? You are offering me one, and I can. Well, well, well <coughs> you can offer me things back as well. That's absolutely fine. <coughs> I have no problem with that in any way, shape, or form. I, but can you think back to the old days when you used to um, go out for a night out with yes. the lads, and then there was the noble lot of crashing the ash. Crashing the ash. Seeing, we're gonna have a tab. Do you want one, Keith? And the well, packet yeah. would get open yes. like that, and somebody would. They are. Everybody would have a twenty packet. That's right. The different. Ah, oh, see, want, yeah, they've got spats on. Right. So you need to take the spat off because I've been trying one. You see. There you are. Um. <coughs> I'm gonna. I probably shouldn't do this, but let's go to close up. You come again, and let's do some comparisons. For here, I has a vape. So let's take the vape out of the box, put it there, and let's put this reg sig beside it. There you go. The reg sig, this one, is a little bit wider, but try that tip in your mouth. And uh, tell me what you think, young sir. It's a bit puny, the whole thing, isn't it, really? Well, in comparison to yeah. what you've been here. No, isn't no, it? I meant in com but Right. It's all right, isn't it? All right. Oh, you're not convinced, are you? It's all gone quiet over there. 
The fact of the matter is, it's not exactly the same size as the Viper. It isn't. Uh, it's a little bit fatter. The tip, though, feels identical to me. And I've not yet pulled one to bits to find out what's inside of it. But if it's not like a Vipe, then it's definitely like an Enjoy King. Um, 2.4 milligrams, 5 for 15 quid. Well, 14.99. And you can get 10% off on their site. Um, that's £3 each for a packet of five. Three pounds each for a packet of five. And that means, uh, now let me, let me say for the, from the outset, these only arrived yesterday and I, I've been quite busy as you've probably gathered. Um, so I've not had a chance to do a puff count on them, but my usual rule of thumb is if they say up to 180 puffs, I'm gonna get about 90. And since, when last Chris and I and a few others decided to do some packs. Um, uh, packs. What was that last one we tried? That was the it? Vibe. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, la the, last, the last time we did any puff counts. Chris, did we come up with around about 15 drags for a fag? Between um, 8 and 16, depending on, you know. How big how your gob is. How drag and how much talking you did in between. Right. So let's say then, this is roughly equal to between 6 and 12 fags. If you want, if, if you do fag likes and fag counts and what have you, this would roughly give you similar to somewhere between 6 and 12 fags. At the top end, 12 times 5 is 60. And 60 fags at the moment would cost you 24 quid. If it's at the bottom end, that would be 30. How much would 30 fags cost these days, Chris? About 12 pounds. Oh, about 12 quid. 12 or 13 quid. Yes. There you go. So we're not, it's not far away. It's actually not far away from the cost of smoking. And here's the bit that I think is actually quite good. And I realise which camera I should be looking at now. If you give somebody <coughs> a single vape, as we've shown, you're looking at an hour to two hours at the outside of solid use, a night out at the pub. If somebody bought a packet of five of these things, they're going to get a night out of them, aren't they? Yes. Even at 90 drags, they're going to get a night out of them. Um, there you go, and Screwbag's saying he's got five packs for 12 quid if you want them. The ones that he gave Tim at Vapefest, I haven't seen Tim to try them, so I don't know. But let, let, let's just look at these. This is, this is really the vibe killer, isn't it? Because it's very, very much like them very very much like them um and I'm, I'm finding it all right what about you i'm not getting much satisfaction out of it quite honestly i think it's probably not aimed at us in the same way that the vape isn't You're aimed at too us too used to the good stuff now Keith. yeah That's probably yes <laughs> yeah too used to I, I, I mean I, i'm i'm taking quite uh, long drags mm. and I'm not getting any sort of hit out of it at all. The throat hit is minor because um, it's 24 milligram and you and I both use 36 day in day out mm. um, and even if 24 I would want it at a, a fairly <coughs> hefty wattage or voltage you know I, I'm not sure I could uh, yeah yeah I would I would be wanting a bit more bang but I'm trying to think back to when I used to smoke fags and I never got a throat hit out of a fag no, no. I, I think I think perhaps, as you say, it, it, it's the fact that they're not uh, they're not particularly strong, are they? No, I mean, there's the, I'm getting a little bit of a tickle, but it's the kind of tickle that you'd get off your girlfriend if she wasn't really, if her heart mm. wasn't in it. If you know what I mean, the gentlemen know what I mean. It's, yeah, it's just it's gentle. It's um, yeah. Leanna Lawless is saying, you don't get throat hit out of fags. Midge dogs, cottoned on to what I've just said. Yes, if our heart's not in it, it's just a tickle. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, but as I say, from the point of view of somebody looking to possibly switch to e-cigs, whereas you wouldn't get very far with a single disposable, this pack of five I quite like. And uh, Screwbag has said he's going to send me his pack of five, which is 12 quid. Please do. We'll have a look at that as well because 
as we said last night, I mean, there were a number of people last night were saying that they felt that the looky lakey kind of thing really did not to be there. But I do think they've got a use. Sammy, are you saying these are BAT? No. Ah. That's why BAT's going to be upset. Ah, right. BAT's job is a what? Are they still six quid, Chris? Uh, I believe they've knocked them down a little bit in price, didn't they? Yeah, but they were seven quid, weren't they? Each. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they're way too expensive. You'd still be looking at, you'd be looking at 25 or 30 quid yes. for five. Yeah. From, for five vapes from BAT. And you only get one of the plastic clicky boxy doodahs. So, cardboard box, it's fine, does the job. Right. You've got your five in. I mean, if you had a shirt pocket, I would tuck it in, but you haven't, so what can I tell you? I won't. But you could, I mean, literally. My mistake, yeah. Shirt, shirt yeah. pocket, <clears> you, you know, and then you can do the. Got them there. I mean, for a, uh, somebody going out for a night out, you've got a night, night out for. for Average folks there, mm. I reckon, and I'm, I'm I haven't been able to follow chat very well at all because I've been gassing off and and talking off, and it's time for the second adverts already. Oh look at that! Blaze has spotted it. Keith's really not bothered for <laughs> once. <laughs> Never mind. We'll talk about stuff that you. There are f yes, ephemeral. Ad, let me go back to closer up. You can and let me get that vibe out the way and and show you. The pack comes, as you can see, with five complete, total, and utter, and Keith's got one. So you're getting five in the packet. Five complete, total, and utter disposables. And I reckon, you know, if you're going to get six to ten fags worth out, that's probably not bad value. That's the kind of thing... That's what we want to be seeing. That's what needs to be in places, you know, for people to buy. As you said, those last ones, I mean, the price was just uh, uh, not on, was it? No, not at all. Not at all. And a Silver Zero 74 has pointed out, if you've got a packet of them in your pocket, if you've got the wherewithal to pick up a couple of packs of five or stuff like that, if you've got the wherewithal and somebody asks you the question... You've got them, haven't you? Yes, yeah. that, that's a thought, isn't it? Yeah, you know, three quid <coughs> yeah. for somebody to try. It may well be that, you know, various different vendors will put an offer on and call them Converto Sigs, for want of a better a better phrase. Yes. Um, they're asking again, it's 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 Vape Lux. Vape Lux is, it just, just Google Vape Lux and you'll find them. I bought these out of my own pocket with my own money. Don't tell Jill. I won't. And I forgot to get the 10% off. These are the people that do the Ishish. Um, but it's called Regsig. They're available in various different places because they're, they're wholesaling all over. Um, yeah. Swigs, Converto Sigs, all that do kind of stuff. The packaging's good. Yes. Shishasticks.co.uk. There you go. Um, yeah, I, you know, from my point of view, I think that's a great idea. That's the kind of stuff that we ought to be seeing. Because one or two of a disposable, frankly, we said it about the Enjoy King. We said it about the Vipe. One mm. or even two, not good enough. They need to be priced like these are priced. No more than three quid each. Bingo, bango, bongo. Job's done. And uh, it's dead easy then for people to give them a try. Mm. At a length I of must time say it's grown on me the more I've, uh, uh, I've used it. Well, I've, I, yes, I mean, the bottom it line on it is... It must be a sort of cumulative thing. Well, it is. I mean, as I say, you're using 24 milligram in there. You're used to 36 during the course of the day. And if you've just come from, as you have, an eye clear 30... Yes. Which is a dual I coil. Take your point. Yeah, and it yeah. bangs it out. This, this is a gateway to vaping. A gateway... Out of smoking. Yes. That's what it is. So there we go. Right. I was going to take the adverts five minutes ago. I'll take them now. We will be back in two minutes. When we get back, I'm just going to catch up on some bits and bobs of stuff that we've been looking at lately. Just to let you know how things are going on. And uh, if I can see what's going on in chat and anybody's got any questions, I'll do my best to answer them as well. I would have been rather better prepared than I have been. But as you can imagine... Uh, it has been a busy day and 
I've been trying to make well. And we are back in the room now. Um, I know you missed the show last night, but do you know what I've just noticed? What's Sorry that? to interrupt. Uh huh. We haven't had the music tonight. Did we not Is play it? the titles? No. We never, I thought we, we never had the music. Yes, I, I, we did. No, we played the titles. I just didn't have the music on in here. Ah, oh, right. Well, that was a. Was that a blessed uh, relief? No, I, I sort of felt more relaxed than usual. I know now why. Uh, it just dawned on me. Oh, there was no. something different. <laughs> I love you, Keith. I really do. Well, One of my oldest friends. Well, I think it's, well, you, sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 no. It's now somebody's mentioned Nigella Lawson. Oh, yes. Stop it. Well, stop it. Just stop it. Or we'll get no sense out of them at all. She has got lovely boobs, though, hasn't she? Now, you see, I wouldn't have said that. Yes, you would. Stop it. Uh, All right. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, right. If you were watching the show last night, and I know you weren't, Keith, um, we touched on eBay and the 100 milligram e-liquid that was being sold on eBay. Well, uh, as I did say it was the end <coughs> of the show last night, Nathan was on it, and Nathan tells me Trading standards have been in touch and I've seen the information that he sent to trading standards. eBay has suspended that page and trading standards is going to be sorting out the website, which that guy also has. Um, and again, we'll keep you up to date on that. Uh, Nathan's collating everything and putting everything together. And maybe next week, maybe the week after, we'll have him on VT talk to fill us in and on exactly what happened there. This is all good stuff. I'm really pleased that we were able to do something about that it's been uh, it's been good it's been very good um yeah <laughs> mr desi vapor has said there uh, is it him that's feeling tripped out seeing the program going on behind as it actually it it's, it's confusing me as well because i'm never mind i just thought i would give it a try see whether it uh, actually did anything for anybody but there you go I like it. you like it do you yeah i think it looks really Okay, uh, I'll take a vote in chat, actually. Everybody that likes the show being played out behind us on that monitor over there when we're live, if you can just type yes into chat, then I'll know and we'll keep it going. If you don't like it, type no into chat, please. Thank you very much. And I'm now looking. Look at all these, you know, yes. I hope you were counting, Chris. Yeah, I've voted at least three times. Oh, have you? Oh. It's, it's mostly yes and a, <laughs> a yes and a meh, indifferent. And I have no strong opinions either way. And Big Craig says, yes, you can see Keith's sneaky moves. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, God. Actually, you've done the right thing. We can take the earpieces out now because there's no Skype coming in. It was... Mine fell out. Oh, well, there you go. 
these things happen. <coughs> um, let's do some catching up. I'm going to get rid of this reg sig now because, as you say, it's uh, you can keep that one by the way. They're only three quid, I don't mind. I'm in the pocket. Oh, um, right. Uh, well, thank if you put it, you, thank put, you, put it in your left hand trouser pocket, then everybody will know what you're doing. All right, there you go. There we go. I'm saying no more than that. Yes, Fumago says it's a complete forest of DD mods there, isn't it? Let's go through some of the stuff that we've looked at lately that I've looked at and said I would come back to because I think we need to. Um, the first of which would be the Kraken. And closer you up, you can, comes into view. And there it is, the Kraken on top of the 134. Um, it is a Genesis style mod. Um, and it is, I'm here to tell you, serving me particularly well. It has yet to spill a drop. It's just not doing it you can lie it on its side and it'll be fine it's not dropping any juice out um i really rather like it do you want to have a drag on it before i uh, move on yes please yes <laughs> i thought you might have i switched it off that doesn't spill a drop either no no it won't do mm-hmm 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 ry6 ry6 always ry6 i shall go to keith camp the, that's the cage beast, isn't no, it? No, you need the button on the bottom. It's a Genesis. Oh, of course, sorry. Big yes. pardon. Thumb button. No, no. The button right. under your thumb. That way around. It's a Genesis. So you always have the, the wick beside your thumb underneath. Wick Oh, down. you live and learn. Yeah. It's technical stuff. There we go. Dave gets asking, um, is it a 22 millimeter that Kraken? Yes. Yes, I'm pretty sure it is. I haven't got my calipers to hand. If I had them to hand, I would do a measurement live on screen. But I'm pretty sure I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll tweet it later. I'll measure mm. it and tweet it later. But I'm, yes, twenty two. Okay, Lyle's well, given us an update. us an update on the bike. It's four ninety nine now and one forty five for a trial. Right. So five of them would be uh, twenty five quid. It's ten quid more expensive than what we've been looking at. And Safer Sigs is saying 21 mil. It's pretty close to 22. I, and I'm not sure why 22 is the magic number, but never mind. What do you reckon of that? Nice case? and easy. It is, isn't yeah. it? Um, and I've, I've been able to set the, the air control to just wherever I want it. And it's, it's just easy. Dead easy to set yeah. up. Dead easy to use. And apparently it's producing quite well. Very well. And that's on pretty low wattage, is that? Yeah, well, that, that, that wattage would be ample for me. Well, I'll have a look at the ring and see what it's at. That's because just to prove me glasses work, you know. Because mm. people nice. think, I, think I only wear these for the look of them, you know. And it's not the case, not in any way, shape or form. I should look at the yeah, ring. Yeah, why did you choose that colour? What, red and black? Yes. Look round the room. Look round the room. Oh. What are we in? Red and black. Uh huh. Red and black and white. Have you seen our but front I, room? I've never chosen my spectacles to suit the deco of the room. No, I, it's not. I chose the deco of the room not to suit my spectacles. I'm colour blind. Right. But I never ever make a mistake with red and black and white. You can't go I wrong. Was, I was forgetting you were colour blind. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, you've never been in the car with me when I've stopped at a green light, have you? No. And okay. you've. Never been in the car with me when I haven't stopped at a red light. No. Generally in the dark, when you you know when there's just the one on? Yes. And you can't see where it is in the cluster of three? Right, uh -huh. yes. So yes. it's just a light, a single light, if yes. it, whether it's red or it's green, I don't know. Right. So I have gone sailing through before now when there's been no traffic. And I have stopped when there's been traffic at green ones. To be asked by my daughter, Dad, what are you doing? I'm stopping. But the light's green. Don't care. It's just me. Yes. Take no notice. So that's that's <laughs> the Kraken. That's the nice. Kraken. And that is serving me very well. Next to the GG. Chris? Yes. You got one, didn't you? Yes. The Just GG. I've stuck um, a, a Vision Victory BCC on my Just GG. And I'll let you have a play with that, Keith, because you have no top pocket. But you got the old brass one, didn't you, Chris? I did. 
And? It's not all brass. Um, the collector tank is um, stainless steel. All right. Which is a little bit odd. And the, um, the top plate there is stainless steel as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, am I happy with it? Yes. That's good to hear because I'm going to say um, that there's no way is Keith going to get out of the house with that, not even for a lend, even though he lives next door. Not a hope in hell. And I'll tell you for now, why. That, that, to my non-technical mind, is better than that. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's to do with the, the wicks. It's to do with comfort. It's to do with all of that kind of stuff. And I bet there's a queer word, isn't it? It suits your palate more. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, there was all. Has all Gid been getting a, G, a just GG as well? Yes, he has. Yes. Oh my God! Whatever. I don't next. know the uh, result yet because I think he's just got it today. He, oh yes, he's just got his today. Yes. Bloody nice. Yeah. Hit, he says. That's what he says. Yes. <laughs> it's mm. Mm, yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And Dars at Super Six got his today, and I think he's very happy with his too. Um. Okay. Mm. Brass, all well, has got the brass one. Everybody's got the brass one. There's only me. Oh, bloody hell, I'm going to have to buy a brass one now, aren't I? <laughs> oh, dear, how sad. Never mind, eh? Because I do like it. I love, I absolutely love the way the centre contact is adjustable without taking that top plinth off so you can make everything work. I have to say, it is serving me very, very well. Um, I'm enjoying well, that. What I like about it is the um, airflow ring. I don't have to try and you know get the uh, pliers out to move it, I just push it up and down, which I didn't realise. Yes. Um, it, and using, I've got a, a crackly pro tank. You know the way you get the odd one that's crackly and spitty. Yes. And it doesn't on here because I can just control the airing and it's lovely. Yes, I'm I'm just whapping it backwards and forwards on screen there now, um, and it is as you say delightful. Now, that, whoops, haha, <laughs> of course, yeah, why not, David? Just look at the wrong piece of the... <coughs> oh, look, I tell you what, I'm going to go to a little piece of film because there was a lot of people were tweeting about Mark Pawsey in the House of Commons today. Have a watch at this before we go. Mark Pawsey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wonder if the Deputy Leader of the House has seen the recent ruling of the European Parliament uh, on e-cigarettes, which determines that an e-cigarette is not, repeat, not a medicinal product. Given that the government is still committed to increasing regulation here, I wonder if we might have a statement from the Department of Health on what action they will take to enable smokers who are looking to reduce their dependency on tobacco to continue to use e-cigarettes. Well, he is right in terms of setting out the government's position. We were disappointed that uh, the European Commission's proposal to regulate uh, these products, including e-cigarettes, as medicines, was not supported uh, by the European Parliament. We do believe these products need to be regulated uh, as medicines. And as he is aware, in the meantime, of course, uh, there are licensed nicotine replacement therapies available uh, to, re to help reduce the harms of smoking to smokers and those ar around them as recommended by NICE. Nice. Mr. Raymond Chishti. Thank you. Yeah, that was Tom Brick, Deputy Leader of the House. Um, you want somebody to tweet at? You want somebody to email? There's your target. Give them some. Let them remember, vapors are voters. Nothing about us without us. And we are watching. Mark pawsey has got it right. And as was said in chat, the here hears were nice to hear. And let's hope we get, what is it, 700 and some MPs or 600 630. and some? Let, 630. Let's, let's hope we can get, you know, a good 450 here hears and a full debate in Parliament uh, because that is absolutely what we need. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there. I, 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 it's been a queer night. It's been a queer day. Uh, I think we've seen somebody trying to hammer the thin end of the wedge home. Um, and I hope... Well, I know, I don't have to hope. I know everybody in the community be, will be fully behind Mark in this fight with the council if it turns out it's rather more than a misunderstanding. I'll certainly be there right at his shoulder um, to, to give him all the assistance and help he needs, whatever it is I can do. Um, it just remains for me to say thank you very much 
to Keith for joining me as usual. Thank you. I'm pleased you were nice and relaxed because the theme music didn't get played. Yes, well, I didn't realise why until near the end. Yeah, uh, I silenced yeah, it for you. Yeah, you see, I was yeah, being. That's really. Uh, yes. It's yes, what you do. And yes. I'd like to say as well, thank you to Mark for coming and sharing the story. Yeah. And thanks to Kat for uh, backing me up. And oh, and Saf, who's just typed into our chat that Swifty McTavish has just said, just to let everybody know that Imeo won't be making any more mechanical mods. The Just GG is his last one. So the ones on the market now will be the only ones. There's not going to be a second batch. So if you want one, get one. Because there won't be any more. But he is going to be making a variable voltage, variable wattage device. Chris, thank you so much for backing up, as you always do. And make sure I keep everything right. No problem. Can I just do a, a quote of the night, like Sam does? Yeah, go for it. My quote came from Paul, uh -huh. 68 when Mark was discussing his problems regarding the local borough council and Paul typed in, they are Ray E. Sigist. Oh, Ray E. Sigist. Oh, Ray God. Sigist. Yeah. I like him. Well done, Paul. Indeed, well done, Paul. Good, good on you, that man. Um, the only thank you it remains for me to give is to thank you for spending the last hour with us thank you so much without you it would be pointless you are the best on the planet thank you so much for uh, for joining us and until next time from cat keith mark sav everybody else on the team and me it's uh, have a very very good night vape on vape hard and because we're posh nil carborundum illegitimai good night everybody night. see you next time yeah. bye